O Most Holy Mother, intercede for us so that we may well understand the teachings of your Divine Son, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and the explanations of the Fathers of the Church. O Immaculate Virgin, I offer you this work and ask that you bless those who hear it. And may it be for the greatest honor and glory of God. Amen. Cleanse my heart and my lips, O Almighty God, who didst cleanse with a burning coal the lips of the prophet Isaias, and vouchsafe in thy loving kindness so to purify me that I may be enabled worthily to announce thy holy gospel. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be in my heart and on my lips, that I may worthily and becomingly announce His gospel. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Matthew The Second Prediction of the Passion and the Payment of the Temple Tax As Jesus and His disciples were gathering in Galilee, Jesus said to them, The Son of Man is to be handed over to men and they will kill him, and he will be raised on the third day. And they were overwhelmed with grief. When they came to Capernaum, the collectors of the temple tax approached Peter and said, Doesn't your teacher pay the temple tax? Yes, Peter said. When he came into the house, before he had time to speak, Jesus asked him, What is your opinion, Simon? From whom do the kings of the earth take tolls or census tax? From their own children or from foreigners? When he said, From foreigners, Jesus said to him, Then the children are exempt. But that we may not offend them, go to the sea, drop in a hook, and take the first fish that comes up. Open its mouth and you will find a coin worth twice the temple tax. Give that to them for me and for you. Comments from the Church Fathers Remigio of Osir Many times the Lord had foretold to His disciples the mysteries of His Passion, so that, when they happened, they could bear them better because He already knew them beforehand. For this reason it is said here, as Jesus and His disciples were gathering in Galilee, Jesus said to them, The Son of Man is to be handed over to men, and they will kill Him. Origen, Hamilii 4 in Matthew. This seems to be so like a warning He had given above, that a man might easily say that the Lord now repeated what he had said before, yet is it not so, he had not before said that he must be betrayed, but we hear now not only that he must be betrayed, but that he must be betrayed into the hands of men. The Son of Man indeed was delivered up by God the Father according to the Apostle, Romans 8 verse 32, but different powers gave him up into the hands of men. St. Jerome Sorrows and consolations are always united. We say this because if the death of the Lord saddens them, what is said to the continuation must rejoice, and he will be raised on the third day. St. John Chrysostom, Homilii in Matthew, Homily 58, 1. The Lord did not say that he would be dead for a long time, but that he would rise again on the third day. Origen, Homilii 4 in Matthew. When the Lord foretold these things to his disciples, they were overwhelmed with grief and they were grieved exceedingly, not keeping in mind what was afterwards added, and he will be raised on the third day, not even considering who he was for whom three days would suffice to destroy death. St. Jerome The extreme sorrow which the disciples had was not the result of their unbelief, but of the love they had for their Master, who did not allow them to hear patiently from him anything sinister and humiliating. Gloss, St. Thomas Aquinas since the disciples were sad after hearing about the Lord's Passion, and so that no one would attribute the Passion of Christ to necessity, and not to humility, the evangelist adds a fact that demonstrates the freedom and humility of Christ. That is why he says, When they came to Capernaum, the collectors of the temple tax approached Peter and said, Doesn't your teacher pay the temple tax? St. Hilary of Poitiers, in Matthew 17 the Lord is asked to pay for the didrachmas, that is, the dinars. The law imposed this tax on all Israel, for the redemption of body and soul, and in order to attend to the ministry of the temple. St. John Chrysostom, Homilii in Matthew, Homily 58, 1. 
for when God slew the firstborn of Egypt, he then accepted the tribe of Levi for them. But because the numbers of this tribe were less than the number of firstborn among the Jews, it was ordained that redemption money should be paid for the number that came short, and then sprang the custom of paying this tax. Because then Christ was a firstborn son, and Peter seemed to be the first among the disciples, they came to him. And as it seems to me this was not demanded in every district, they come to Christ in Capernaum, because that was considered his native place. St. Jerome. Or otherwise, from the time of Augustus Caesar Dudea was made tributary, and all the inhabitants were registered, as Joseph with Mary his kinswoman gave in his name at Bethlehem. Again, because the Lord was brought up at Nazareth, which is a town of Galilee subject to Capernaum, it is there that the tribute is asked of him, but for that his miracles were so great, those who collected it did not dare to ask himself, but make up to the disciple. St. John Chrysostom, Homilii in Matthew, Homily 58, 1. And they did not demand it very vehemently, but with great sweetness, and not in the form of an accusation, but they addressed the disciple by asking him, doesn't your teacher pay the temple tax? St. Jerome. Or they also maliciously ask if Christ paid the taxes to see if he would oppose Caesar's will. St. John Chrysostom, Homilii in Matthew, Homily 58, 1. What does Peter answer? He says yes, and he says it to those to whom he pays and not to Christ, perhaps because it would cause him shame to speak these things with Christ. Gloss, St. Thomas Aquinas. Otherwise, Peter answered, Yeah, meaning, yeah, he does not pay. And Peter sought to acquaint the Lord that the Herodians had demanded tribute, but the Lord prevented him, when he came into the house, before he had time to speak, Jesus asked him, What is your opinion, Simon? From whom do the kings of the earth take tolls or census tax? From their own children or from foreigners? St. Jerome before Peter suggested the idea to him, the Lord asked him, so that the disciples would not be scandalized by the demand for the tax, seeing that he knew everything that was done in his absence. It follows, when he said, from foreigners, Jesus said to him, then the children are exempt. Origen, Homilii 4 in Matthew. This speech has a twofold meaning. First, that the children of the kings of the earth are free with the kings of the earth but strangers, foreigners in the land, are not free, because of those that oppress them, as the Egyptians did the children of Israel. The second sense is, for as much as there be some who are strangers to the sons of the kings of the earth, and are yet sons of God, therefore it is they that abide in the words of Jesus, these are free, for they have known the truth, and the truth has set them free from the service of sin, but the sons of the kings of the earth are not free, for everyone who commits sin is a slave of sin. John 8 verse 34. St. Jerome. But our Lord was the son of a king, whether according to the flesh or the spirit, since he descended from the race of David and was the word of the Father omnipotent. Therefore, as the son of a king, he did not owe taxes. St. Augustine, Questions Evangeliorum, 1, 23. It says that in every kingdom children are free, that is, they are not taxable. Much more should the children of the kingdom of him under whom all the kingdoms of the earth are free in any kingdom. St. John Chrysostom, Homilii in Matthew, Homily 58, 1. But this instance were brought to no purpose if you were not a son. But someone they say, he is son indeed, but not an own son. But then he were a stranger, and so this instance would not apply, for he speaks only of own sons distinct from whom he calls them strangers who are actually born of parents. Mark how here also Christ certifies that relationship which was revealed to Peter from God, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God, Matthew 16 verse 16. St. Jerome. Therefore even though he was free, yet because he clothed the lowliness of the flesh, he had to perform all the duties of justice. Therefore it continues, but that we may not offend them, go to the sea drop in a hook, and take the first fish that comes up. Origen, Homilii 4 in Matthew. We may hence gather as a consequence of this, that when any come with justice demanding our earthly goods, it is the kings of the earth that send them, to claim of us what is their own, 
and by his own example the Lord forbids any offense to be given even to these, whether that they should sin no more, or that they should be saved. For the Son of God, who did no servile work, yet as having the form of a slave, which he took on him for man's sake, gave custom and tribute. St. Jerome. I do not know what to admire more in this passage, the foreknowledge of the Saviour, or His greatness. Either He knew, by foreknowledge, that there was a stator in the mouth of a fish, and precisely in the first one that Peter was to catch, or, by His greatness and power, a stator was created in the mouth of the fish, in this way He did with His word what He was to find afterwards. Therefore Christ Himself, out of His exceeding charity, took up the cross and paid the taxes. And we wretches, who bear the name of Christ, and who have done nothing worthy of so great a majesty, have not paid taxes for his honor, and are, as the children of a king, exempt from taxes. Simply to know this course of Christ, in the midst of his extreme poverty, since he had no wherewith to pay the tax for his person or for that of the apostle, edifies anyone who knows it. And if someone were to object to us, what about the purse that Judas carried? we will answer that Christ considered it criminal to apply for his own benefit what belonged to the poor, and that he himself left us this example. St. John Chrysostom, Homilii in Matthew, Homily 58, 2. Or also that he does not want the money they were carrying, to show that he was the Lord of the sea and the fishes. Origen, Homilii 4 in Matthew. Or also because it did not bear the image of Caesar because the prince of this world had nothing to do with him. Therefore he did not take Caesar's image from the things he possessed, but from the depths of the sea. He did not receive the ether, nor did he make it his own, so that the image of Caesar would not be next to the image of the invisible God. See the prudence of Christ, who does not refuse to pay the tribute, nor does he command it to be paid in the ordinary way. The Lord first manifests that he is not subject to the tax and then pays it. He did this, that is, he paid the tax, so that the collectors would not be scandalized, and the first, that is, he would show that he was not subject, so that the disciples would not be scandalized. When the Pharisees established their doctrine on food, the Lord despised the scandal of the Pharisees themselves, Matthew 15, in this way, he shows us how to know when it is best not to despise those who are scandalized and when it is appropriate to ignore them. St. Gregory, the Great, Homilii in Hezekihilum Prophetam, Homily 7, 4. We must consider that we are under obligation to avoid scandal in everything in which there is no sin, but if the scandal has its origin in the truth, then it is better to allow the scandal to be born than to leave the truth. St. John Chrysostom, Homilii in Matthew, Homily 58, 2. And just as we are astonished at the virtue of Christ, so we should be filled with admiration by the faith of Peter, who obeyed so difficult a thing. Therefore the Lord rewarded him for his faith by incorporating him into the payment of the tax, which was most honorable to him. That is why he says, Open its mouth and you will find a coin worth twice the temple tax. Give that to them for me and for you. Gloss, St. Thomas Aquinas for by custom every several man paid a didrachma for himself, now a stator is equal to two didrachmas. Origen, Homilii 4 in Matthew. Mystically, in the field of comfort, for so is Capernaum expounded, he comforts each one of his disciples, and pronounces him to be a son and free, and gives him the power of taking the first fish, that after his ascension Peter may have comfort over that which he has caught. St. Hilary of Poitiers, in Matthew 17. When Peter is instructed to take the first fish, it is shown therein that he shall catch more than one. The blessed first martyr Stephen was the first that came up, having in his mouth a stator, which contained the didrachma of the new preaching, divided as two denarii, for he preached as he beheld in his passion the glory of God, and Christ the Lord. St. Jerome or, that fish which was first taken is the first Adam, who is set free by the second Adam, and that which is found in his mouth, that is, in his confession, is given for Peter and for the Lord. Origen, Homilii 4 in Matthew. And when you see any miser rebuked by some Peter who takes the speech of his money out of his mouth, you may say that he is risen out of the sea of covetousness to the hook of reason, and is caught and saved by some Peter, who has taught him the truth 
that he should change his stator for the image of God, that is for the oracles of God. St. Jerome. And beautifully is this very stator given for the tribute, but it is divided, for Peter as for a sinner a ransom is to be paid, but the Lord had not sin. Yet herein is shown the likeness of their flesh, when the Lord and his servants are redeemed with the same price. We have reached the end of another day of comments on the gospel that the Holy Church proposes for us to meditate on today, using the Catina Aurea. Thanks so much for following along. I ask that, if possible, subscribe to the channel, comment, like and share. May Our Lady reward you for this act of charity. And see you tomorrow, with God's graces. Please.